What is going on guys? Eric Janik, we have a full day of eating for you. Six weeks out from my show, so I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm eating. Uh, we're gonna go over some supplements, some peptides, some other things just throughout the day. I'm gonna be talking you guys through like the mentality I think a lot of mistakes people make when dieting for a show or just dieting for summer. So you can take some of these tips I'm giving you and even if you're trying to get shredded for summer, you can take these and use them towards your own, let's say, cut for summer, prep, bodybuilding prep, like obviously a lot of you guys have coaches, but I think a lot of the things I will have to tell you are things I've learned over like 12 years of like trying to get lean, so um, on and off. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into meal one. Start off this video, guys. I have new low weigh-in, so I want to see what the physique is looking like. We're about just under six weeks out. Legs starting to really separate now. Glutes starting to peek through tremendously. So side pose looking good. Let's see what we're giving. Upper body, my upper body tends to get a lot leaner faster than the lower. So you can see already abs are pretty much in, I would say. Legs peeled, waist getting a lot smaller. So we get that feathering in that side leg. You see when I push against it, Let's see the back. So this is where I always have to lose the last bit of body fat tie-ins and glutes. They're starting to come in, but got a little more work to do there. Back, lower back, starting to Christmas tree. Yeah, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good. So I'm exhausted because I just did walk the babies to daycare. So that was like three and a half miles round trip, which is really nice because then I get my steps. My heart rate was about 122 average, which is great. Um, I would really recommend guys, especially fasted, don't push your heart rate well over like, let's say two, like 130, 140. You're just in a very high cortisol state. So if you're new fast cardio, I'd recommend like that zone three, like 120, 125, 128, maybe 130. But above that, I think you're probably pushing cortisol too high. You might go a little bit into digging into your lean tissue. So. Anyway, let's get some fucking food, dude. All right, starting off the day with a meal that's not even mine, but since I'm such a good house husband <laughs> and she only gets 15 minutes to eat, we've got here, what do we got here, babe? We've got four eggs scrambled four with scrambled, cheese. Four scrambled eggs with cheese. Microgreens. Some microgreens on there for some, it's a super food apparently. A little European salad. A little European salad, tomatoes and cucumbers. Peeled, obviously. If I left those peels on those cucumbers, I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Big fucking trouble. We got some strawberries and blueberries and you know, drizzle some nut butter on there. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, meal one for Lena and meal zero for fucking me, I'm starving. All right, so meal one, I've got two things, two parts of my breakfast. I kind of do like a savory and sweet, I really like that. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have a ton of fats to work with, so I'm gonna be using egg whites instead of eggs. I do usually do full eggs in the off season, but I'm gonna be doing egg whites. I start off with some olive oil cooking spray. I'm gonna get this pan like super hot. I'm gonna leave this on high. I've got a really good burner here. And I'm gonna let this get to like, almost like, not where it's smoking, so I don't wanna like create the carcinogens, but get it really, really hot because I don't wanna put the eggs in there until it's literally like starts cooking right when it hits the pan. So what I'm gonna do is put the egg whites down, measure those out, and then I'm gonna add some shredded kale, some microgreens after I cook it, um, and a little bit of goat cheese, and it's absolutely delicious. I'm gonna do some of this applewood smoked sea salt. Um, for you guys, tip number one, if you guys are like really freaked out about salt and you don't put salt on your food, it's a very bad idea. If you are prepping or you are like doing a lot of cardio, sweating, training, like you need electrolytes, you need salt. I would really recommend like a high quality, let's say Malden salt, sea salt, um, over let's say like an iodized like table salt. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to salt your food, especially if you're training really hard. Okay, for my sweet portion, I'm gonna be doing oats. You guys can do cream of rice. I also recommend bowl of gains. It's really good stuff. This is the brownie batter. Since I put protein in my oats, I tend to do oats instead of cream of rice just because I don't want to get like cloyingly sweet because if you have that, those are already sweetened with uh, some sort of sweetener, I think stevia. Um, so basically, uh, I'm gonna do about 85 grams of uncooked oats, which is just about a cup 
perfect. And then I've got, I love like this unsweetened almond milk. It's for the whole serving, 240 mLs. It's literally 30 calories. So it's kind of got this thicker consistency. So instead of cooking my oatmeal with just water, it helps to add 240. This because it's so low calorie, but it gives it a lot more thickness. Um, put a little extra water because the protein powder I use is, runs really thick. So if I don't put enough water, it kind of turns into like concrete. Uh, cook this up for five minutes. While that is cooking, now the pan is super fucking hot, which is good. And we're gonna take our kale, our egg whites. So I'm gonna negative weigh this. So I'm gonna use the container weight. So it looks like it's about 270. So I assume it's gonna be almost a full what's left in this container. But you see how it hits the pan? It's basically already like cooking. That's kind of what I want to see. What do you think, Phil? Can I, you think I do it perfect? How much do you need? 240. Mm, might be a little less. Fuck, oh, that was so off. Yeah. Yikes. All right, so 240, that gives me about, I'll look at it, but I think it's like 30 plus grams of protein. And then I'm gonna take this shredded kale, put it on top, take some of this applewood smoked sea salt, get it nice and evenly on there. Then I'm gonna take this, turn it down just a hair, and then I'm gonna lid it. So basically what that's gonna do is create steam in there. It'll cook the eggs all the way through, but then it'll kind of steam that kale on top. And then once it's done, I'm gonna take it and turn it into like almost like a little fake tortilla and flip it in half after I put the goat cheese on it. But yeah, we're gonna let this cook up and I'll show you guys the final product. All right, tip number two is, and this is a tough one because if you have a coach that, or you maybe are a person that, that follows structure really well, I think it's fine to have like a general base structure. Um, I have never worked well with a coach. It's like you have to eat like seven ounces of rice and six ounces of ground beef for breakfast. I work with Callum Reistrick and we do macros. And I think that macros are extremely efficacious because it gives you the opportunity to like vary your foods up. So like maybe tomorrow I want cream of rice. Maybe the next day I want to do some sourdough toast. Not to say that like you always wanna be changing things because it's easier if you have a general structure, but it gives me the freedom to not feel stifled. Like I don't feel like I have any cravings right now and I'm like six weeks out from bodybuilding, so probably arguably about 7% body fat. So you would think right now, I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna like just wanna binge on Ben and Jerry's donuts. But I really don't, like I'm happy with the food. I enjoy every single meal I eat. Um, and that's just because I do kind of give myself that variance, like changing up the protein, changing up the carb sources. Um, at the end of the day, here's the most important fucking thing, guys. And I will implore you to think about this. The most important thing is in just incurring a, between like, let's say a three to 500 calorie deficit on a given day and keeping high enough protein levels that you're not muscle wasting. And for all those of you use on anabolics, it's a lot more conducive to have higher levels of carbohydrates and lower levels of fat, pretty much just like enough fat to like give you satiation. So I use like 60 grams a day right now. And if you can do that and you can push enough output and create that three to 500 calorie deficit, then you're going to be losing body fat and probably pretty tissue retentive. Even if you're natural, if you keep your protein intake high enough and you don't go crazy, what people will do will like try to push a thousand, 1500 calorie deficit right off the bat, they'll start eating like 1200 calories but that's not good because you're probably losing more body fat than muscle, lowering your metabolic capacity. And so what I recommend guys is if you are not doing it with a coach or your coach is okay with it, like use macros, create a general structure and then allow yourself to vary in and out foods. Like here and there, maybe have like something you like, let's say a half of a Len and Larry's protein cookie. I think those are garbage. I'm just thinking about an example or like a Fig Newton or like an Oreo, like, there's no, there's no, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with having like one birthday cake Oreo at the end of your night if you're like, all right, I've got this much carbs and fats left. I'm gonna have one Oreo, it's gonna make my fucking day. Like, you're still gonna fucking lose body fat. You're probably gonna be a little happier. And unless you're that person that like literally eats that one cookie and then loses their fucking shit, um, which you shouldn't be if you're eating mindfully and you have a good balance in your nutrition. But if you are doing that, then you should feel good. You should feel like you're not like restrictive. And that's why so many of these bodybuilders and people that are in the fitness industry, they'll like binge because they're so restricted. So that's my two cents, guys. Um, just don't over restrict. I think it's a lot better to follow a protocol like this where it's eating, like I fucking love this breakfast. 
I would eat this. I eat this even my off season with the slight changes to make it more calories, but it just shows that I still eat the foods that I enjoy even in prep. All right, so meal number one, we have 849 calories, but our macros are going to be 83 carbs, six fiber, so probably just about just high 70s in the terms of carbs. Uh, 25 fat because I did include my almond milk and half and half I put in my coffee. Without that, I would be like closer to 18. And then 75 grams of protein. So a pretty high protein meal. Uh, tip number three, I'm gonna debunk protein. You can't like eat too much protein in one sitting. Like that's not how your body works. So if you tend to like to have a bigger breakfast, which I do, and then a smaller, let's say pre-workout meal that doesn't have as much protein, that's what I'd recommend. Um, but yes, it's not, you can't like, there's nothing, there's completely debunked that your body can only like digest 30 grams of protein in one sitting. That's such bullshit. So I wouldn't recommend eating 250 grams of protein in one meal. Uh, I think that would completely destroy your digestive system. But uh, within reason, I would say maybe if you wanted to split it across three meals instead of six meals, it's gonna be all the same thing. So uh, that's can't car uh, the calories and macros. I'm gonna dig in here to give you guys a little flavor view. So as you can see, I kind of turn it over. So it's almost like a little like breakfast taco. And then I'll just usually rip off a little piece. You can see inside you got the goat cheese microgreens. Really so good. I mean, simple, but a lot of protein, not a lot of fat. Um, also you get like the micronutrients from the, and fiber from the kale, microgreens. Also have some micronutrients from the blueberries and my oats. So uh, you, you, I, if you missed it, I drizzled some peanut butter and added 100 grams of blueberries on top of these oats. And then I'm gonna add some mauled and salt as well. So trying that and then uh, in a minute we'll try the oats as well. Now this is probably my favorite meal of the day is my protein oats. So I've got a little stevia. I've got the protein powder, cinnamon, some vanilla extract. And then I sprinkle a little bit of this flake Malden sea salt on top. So it gives it kind of like a sweet savory and then the peanut butter drizzle. Literally like a treat. I feel so good. And just like, look at the volume guys. Like I think just in this part of my meal, it's like 450 calories, maybe 500. And like, look how big that bowl of food is. Like it makes you feel very satiated, really full afterwards and ready to train in a couple hours here. So uh, I will skip ahead and we'll, I'll show you my pre-workout meal. All right, I know it's full day of eating, but we're gonna go over some supplements right now. So first thing in the morning, I take a Armour thyroid bioidentical, uh, basically thyroid support, 60 milligrams. So this is a T3, T4 combination. Um, this is just literally because blood work showed me thyroid was a little suboptimal. Um, so I monitor my thyroid, uh, my TSH, my T3, T4, uh, and do a 60 milligram, basically hormone replacement for thyroid. Thyroid is highly uh, associated with metabolism, energy, sleep quality, a lot of things. So uh, definitely test for that if you're not currently. Do a little DHEA, similar kind of pathways there uh, for thyroid. Um, and then I've got, I start my morning, I do a little bit of proviron, um, which helps to reduce any like androgenic side effects from any of the anabolics. I do a little bit of a fat burning stack. I do clenbuterol. Right now I'm at like 80 milligrams, micro, not milligrams, I'd be fucking dead. Micrograms a day, so tremendous of fat burning. Then I use a five amino MQ, 50 milligram capsule, three times a day from Transcend. Um, so most of the stuff I'm getting from Transcend, I do an omega-3. So really important if you are supplementing, let's say testosterone and other androgens to get good amount of healthy fats in through fish oil or a omega-3. Uh, this has also has a D3 built into it. Um, P5P, very good if you're t if like, it's a basically prolactin mitigator. So if you're taking any androgens that tend to like flare up gynecomastia or like spike estrogen. Um, P5P is a really great natural supplement to pre uh, prevent that. Uh, I take a Digest Gold um, with my meals. I take an HTLT, my company, liver support. Great product here, it has Tudka built into it so I don't have to take it separately. I take an Ashwagandha and Tonga Ali also from HTLT. Supplements, great health products. I do a vitamin B complex. I do one of these which is uh, 150 milligrams of vitamin C. And so that's gonna be 
the supplement side of things. Uh, so obviously these kind of like go throughout the day. I also take a one a day Zao Complete. I use the organ support as well. Uh, this is also through Transcend. So if you guys are interested, use the link there to get your blood work. What I still recommend to people is like, take supplements based on your actual needs instead of like what I take. So if you go and do your blood work and you're showing like an iron deficiency or a magnesium deficiency, or let's say your thyroid is suboptimal, your hormones are suboptimal, like build your protocol off of that instead of like what you think you might be taking. Um, last thing I do for cholesterol and heart health is red yeast rice um, and citrus bergamot. So also great supplements as well. So that's pretty much the supplement stack. Um, I will be getting into a little bit of the PEDs. Um, so pre-workout, I do 50 milligrams of this stuff, Anivar. So very muscle retentive. Uh, it's the only oral I'll really take. It's very minimally body toxic. I will never touch Anadrol, Superdrol, D-Ball. Um, it's just not worth it for me as a, as a father. Um, that may be some incremental gains that I can get from an oral, especially in the off season. I just don't find it necessary for myself because I can build muscle pretty easily. Um, in terms of the other anabolics, uh, I won't go into exact dosing, but total anabolic load right now is about 1500 milligrams for the week. Uh, which is made up of, I'll be able to give you the test numbers, like 500, and the other is split through Primobol and Mastron. So those compounds are very safe, very lowly, they don't aromatize, and usually you don't even have to take much of an AI, like an anastrozole, if you can balance those, like your test with, and they're called like cover it off with, let's say a Mastron or Primo. A lot of people just run just Mast. Um, like John Jewett, for example, runs very high Mastron in his prep. Uh, it's very muscle retentive. You don't get a lot of the negative uh, androgenic side effect or uh, estrogenic side effects that you would get from, let's say, a high dose of Tren or a high dose of, let's say, maybe like more like EQ. So, um, so yeah, that is pretty much the supplement protocol right now and I'm gonna chill for like 30 minutes shower and then show you exactly what I'm gonna eat pre-workout. I right, technically meal two here. We have a two slices of sourdough toast. They're thin, they're kind of smaller pieces. So I think it's only 120 calories in those two. I've got a hundred grams of banana. I put some Malden. If you guys do not have this so good, it's like flake salt. It's kind of like what they put on like um, like salted caramel or chocolate chip cookies with sea salt. Um, and then I just did three ounces of chicken. I'm a little hungry. I usually don't do protein pre-workout, but we, uh, we've we been kind of filming, dicking around a bit. So uh, I just want to get a little extra food in my stomach because I'm hungry. I'm going to take that with my pre-workout. Um, I'll show you guys what that is in a bit, but eat this really quick. And then 10 minutes later, I'll probably do my pre-workout, which is non-caloric. And then I'll show you exactly what I do intra-workout as well. All right, so meal two here, we have 62 carb, we have one fat, and we have 25 protein. So super high, well, it's higher carb, super low fat, um, as that's kind of my setup right now, is I try to keep my fat super low so my calories don't get blown out. And uh, really good like pre-workout with the salt on there. Legit, let's try it out. The honey, cinnamon, perfectly ripe bananas. But like in prep, you just like appreciate the fuck everything. When I was eating like 6,500 calories, I never appreciated anything I was eating. I was like, oh God. You know what I mean? Like you get down to like, for me, 3,500 calories is not very much. So you get down to this, you're like, mmm, sensational. All right, pre-workout, I'm gonna do one scoop of the Hardcore Stim. HTLT, my company. I'm gonna do one scoop pre-pump, one scoop of Hardcore Stim. I'm gonna do creatine monohydrate. You can get creatine from us. I got this I got this months and months ago. It's like a bulk supplement, so I'm not gonna lie. Creatine tends to be all the same. So I'm gonna do each of those scoops, about five grams, 10 grams there. Intra workout, I'm gonna do a hydrate carbolin. So this is a carbolin, carbohydrate uh, supplement. So basically each scoop has 25 grams of carbs. I'm gonna go 50 grams intra workout. I basically sip on that as I train, um, just as I get in a deficit, especially. It's nice to have, a lot of people are like, oh, I'd rather have all my food from food food, um, whole food sources, but then a day like my workout's super important to me. So if, even if it means I get a little less rice later or something, um, I'd rather use those carbs intra training. And then also I've noticed that I do my cardio right after I train just cause I can't wake up and do it fast since I have the babies. So it's nice for me to have that little like extra glycogen boost before I get on the, let's say treadmill or 
uh, at the end of the workout for 45 minutes. So uh, really good to get those carbs in. And so, yeah, I will see you guys at the gym. Pull up when they're hungry, they big body, big body. Serving it, serving the crew. Serving on juice, so serving on drink. Don't give a fuck about your rank. Don't give a fuck about your business. Don't give a fuck about your business. But it's a chance that I'm coming on. I'm in a cup with a hundred bars. I'll make them stop and stand. I'll make them say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Come out in the summer. Okay, so just finished the workout. As you saw, a little line Taj put there. So I'm gonna finish off with a scoop and a half of HGLT whey blend. Um, that's gonna give me 40 grams of protein. While I'm factoring my carbolin in my intro workout, so I was 50 grams of carbs. And then I'm doing 10 grams of honey, so there are eight grams of carbs in this. So total, we are at with the three grams of carbs from the shake, three, uh, 61 total carbs 38 protein and one fat so pretty much see let's still keep the fats nice and low drinking this before i do my 45 minutes on the stairs let's get some just to prevent any catabolism when i do my cardio first workout so like i said i don't do my fast and i do it after i train it's just good to have like this little shake little carbs and uh make it so i don't go hypo i'm in sparking and Sentinel now. Meal four, we are back at the house. We got my son Landon here. We have eight ounces of rice, six ounces of chicken, and I air fried some zucchini right now. So this is going to be a total of about 45 carb, about 46 protein and two fat. So not a super hefty meal, but I am definitely hungry and ready to eat. Let's just give this a quick flavor test. This also spicy taco sauce like five calories. So not substantive. So if you want something, usually it's Pretty low calorie, like a taco sauce. Mm. Can Landy try it? Mm. Want to try some rice? Mm. I'm gonna eat my macros, bro. Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Disgusting, Dad. How could you possibly eat that? Get, get out of here. <laughs> All right, guys, dinner time now. Babies are in bed. We got meal five. I made some 96% lean burgers. I chop up finely mushrooms, peppers, onions. I put seasoning in there and then I cook them in the skillet to like medium. Um, so obviously super lean instead of getting like the 85, 15. Um, I've got some asparagus air fried, some zucchini from earlier, a little bit of sauerkraut for gut health, and then eight more ounces of rice. And we're gonna put this down. I'm gonna give this one little taste test because look at that. Wow. Mm. Simple pleasures, man, right? Well, we're gonna eat this. And I'll see you guys the last meal. Oh yeah, macros. It's like 45 carbs, 40 protein, like six fat for this. All right guys, and for my last meal of the day, I know I'm voicing over this one, but uh, the audio completely went berserk. So I'm just going to be voicing this one over. So what I'd start, I finished the day with is kind of like a cottage cheese and fruit bowl. So I start with a cottage cheese base. I put some frozen fruit, um, some fresh fruit as well, berries, um, and some honey, peanut butter, and then some fiber cereal. So this is a really great end of the day, high protein, um, has a saltiness from the cottage cheese, the sweet from the fruit. Uh, you also get some healthy fats and then the fiber from not only the fiber cereal, but also the fruits that helps me um, stay more full overnight um, just because that's been a huge problem for me in the past, especially when like in a deficit of just waking up at three or four in the morning, just super hungry. So this is a very nice nutrient dense final meal. So highly recommend something along these lines. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys loved the video. Remember uh, to subscribe to the page, like and comment uh, below what you think of my meals, if you would eat this stuff. Um, but yeah, and I will be looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video.